and joining us now on our book talk segment, we're going to find out about uh, computers and uh, more specifically coding and how they work and how you can learn how to do it. It's a great new book called Everything You Need to Ace Computer Science and Coding in One Big Fat Notebook. And it's from the editors of our good friends at uh, BrainQuest. We've had uh, several uh, guests on before from that uh, great company. And Grant Smith joins us today. He's the VP of Education for uh, Code Ninjas. And they joined us by telephone to talk about the book. And Grant, talk, good to talk with you. How are you today? Thanks. Good. Thanks so much for having me. I had a chance to, to kind of read through the book a, a little bit. I wish I had this book when I was uh, taking, uh, if you ever heard of Fortran back in college, uh, I wish I had it then because I had no idea what was going on and the teacher wasn't very good. So this would have helped me back then. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had it too. <laughs> I guess now, and, and, and the way you write it is it's very easy to understand. It's kind of geared toward not kids, right? Not just for kids, but it's kind of geared toward what grade? Like 6th, 7th, 8th grade, that, or even younger? No, that's right. Yeah, middle school, it's, it's geared for middle school kids. It's written as if a middle schooler wrote it. So I had to uh, go back to the days when I was teaching middle school and remember all the humor. You know, middle schoolers are pretty unique. And so sure. uh, we, we wrote it in a way that they would identify with. I guess, uh, and from what I understand, uh, they start kids almost, what, first, second grade now with some kind of computer class? in elementary school, so they're getting started that young now, right? Yeah, I actually started teaching my kid just the ABCs of coding at three. Um, oh. And really, I think the important, yeah, and, and people always are surprised by that, and even that we're teaching middle schoolers coding, but I think that's because uh, adults usually think of college-level computer science, but what we've done in the book is break it down so it's very easy to understand for the middle school level. Yeah, there's a word, you mentioned coding. I mean, that's the, the, the backbone of, uh, of all computers is the programming of it, coding the word. Uh, uh, it's kind of a scary word, I guess, to, to people over a certain age, right? But it isn't as complicated as, as from just reading through the book as you think, right? I mean, there's something to it, but it's not that complicated. You shouldn't be scared of it. Right. You shouldn't be scared of it, um, especially with the way that we've approached it. And we actually have uh, three different languages that we talk about in the book. As you can see, it is a big, fat notebook, so there are uh, plenty of pages to go through. <laughs> um, we, we talk about uh, Python and some web development, including HTML and CSS, and an educational programming language called Scratch, which is probably the most approachable one, um, and, and that's kind of the introductory one. So you know, no, no matter what level you're at, there's something there for you. That's one I had never heard of. I've heard of Python. I didn't know much about it, but Scratch, yeah. I learned something from your book. I had never heard of that. It's kind of a, uh, a beginner's program for coding. I mean, is that the one you'd learn first if, if you're going to do this? Yeah, that's what I always recommend. Um, it is actually a visual programming language. So what you do in the program is you snap these blocks together where each block represents what would be a typed out line of code. And so there's no way that you can accidentally misspell a word or you know, if you, um, you know, even have too many spaces in Python, then it could run, uh, it won't run correctly. So with Scratch, it, it takes out a lot of the um, user error end of things, and you can just focus on the logic and trying to get the algorithm to work. And I guess in a sense, it's uh, a little easier nowadays to, to learn it because you're learning it on a computer, right? I mean, uh, in the old days, you had to read it in a book, so at least you can play with it while you're learning it. Yeah, or even if you know, um, in the book, we talk about the history of computing, you'll see the punch cards that people used to sure. have to actually punch yeah. out holes in paper to write programs. So yeah, I think that's a big reason why it's more popular today to start at a younger age because we have good tools to teach at a younger age and get kids going um, and, and so they can learn. Our kids, uh, I guess they are, because kids nowadays, I guess the last 10, 15 years, they're growing up with the, not only the computers, but the cell phones, so I guess they're used to it, right? It's, it's uh, second nature, at least, to have the device that uses it, and I guess they're more interested now in how, how to put it together, right? Yeah, and I think a big part of this is um, I, I think all kids should actually learn computer science and coding in school, um, even at middle school or even younger, because... It, not not to make a cheap labor force for Google or Facebook, but I think it's important because we live in the digital world. Like you said, there's cell phones everywhere. Our fridges have computers in them. Our watches are computers. Everything has computers in them. We live in a digital world. So just like we teach everybody science because, you know, we want them to understand the physical world, we should be teaching everyone computer science so they understand uh, how things work that they interact with every day, especially now that we're all working remotely, right? Sure. <laughs> I, I don't know if we could spend even a day without our computers. 
Yeah, really, there's no jobs, I don't think, that doesn't have some attachment to a, a device where you have to at least have some kind of rudimentary knowledge of, uh, you know, sending a message or, or writing some kind of uh, documentation online. So uh, I would say 90% of every job, of all the jobs, have some link to that, right? Exactly. Even in farming, I lived in Washington State for a while, and I remember out in the fields seeing drones flying around uh, the oh, different yeah. farms, collecting information, and then sending it back to the farm. And they use, and somebody's got to program the drone and, and use that information. And we have a whole chapter, a whole unit on the data and analysis on how to collect a lot of data and then process it in a way to uh, make decisions. Yeah, just uh, again, the book uh, you go into very simply uh, describing. You get some great, uh, you know, diagrams or drawings, I should say, in the book that really kind of explain it. Uh, uh, universal programming principles and just kind of get, how to get started with the whole thing. And even you go into uh, algorithm. That's kind of a word we hear that all the time, but nobody quite knows what it is. <laughs> yeah, so pick up the book and then you will. That's right. It's a very anybody who uses YouTube or any of the uh, social media knows what an algorithm is, right? Whatever comes into the top of the list first. But that's an algorithm, right? Right. Hey, yeah, you, exactly. So, and I'll, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I was going to ask, how did you put the book together? I know the people at BrainQuest uh, kind of work with you. They do a great job with this kind of thing. But what was your process of doing this book? I know you taught before. Or you have to. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So it was great to use the BrainQuest format from the other Big Fat Notebooks um, because they have such a great format in um, how they break things down and the, the voice of the middle schooler and the very uh, engaging illustrations and everything. But then, yeah, uh, in addition to that, it was relying on experience as a former middle school teacher. I've now taught um, hundreds of teachers uh, how to teach computer science at that age level as well. And then I helped write the standards uh, for K-12 uh, computer science education as well for the U.S. Um, so kind of relying on all that. And and then, uh, again, right now I'm the VP of education at Code Ninjas, where we teach thousands of kids in an after-school setting. Um, so kind of all of that rolled into trying to get this um, book out to explain all these concepts at the appropriate uh, level. Yeah, that's great. Are, are the public schools, uh, uh, is it officially kind of in the curriculum, or is it still kind of a, you know, ancillary thing where they teach maybe as a, you know, a, a late afternoon course, or is it actually part of the curriculum now, coding I'm talking about? It's mostly ancillary, yeah, right. Um, it's mostly ancillary. It's, it's 35 states have standards around it. Two states have required it, so it's not ancillary. It is required. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's slowly getting there. It's becoming part of the, um, you know, full uh required curriculum but we still have some work to do on that end right. um, to make that happen yeah uh, and there's, uh, some school boards are a little hard to convince I, i've heard stories so <laughs> keep after it <laughs> yeah yeah right in the meantime, you can get the book for your kid to learn at home if your, your school That's doesn't That's it. it. And we uh, invite you to, to check it out. Everything you need to ace computer science and coding in one big fat notebook is the full title. And we've been talking with uh, Grant Smith today. And Grant, give out your website or what website for the book and uh, people get more information. Yeah, you can buy the book right now on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Or once your bookstore opens, you'll be able to go in and buy the book there as well. Um, and if you want to connect with me, I'm on Twitter at uh, W. Grant Smith. Great. Also, WGrantSmith.com is your website, right? So you can see uh, more yeah, uh, information correct. there as well. Grant, uh, doing a great job, and uh, good luck with what you're doing, and continue that, and hopefully we can talk to you again, and thanks for being with us. All right. Thank you so much, Doug. I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America.